What's up folks, Casual Dad here, and tonight we're actually going to do a, a prep episode. So I'm looking at my next Sunday Funday, um, and I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm going to play a little bit of Divinity Original Sin 2. We've got this huge craze around Larian's Baldur's Gate 3, which I absolutely love, but I'm doing a really slow play and it's going to take me forever to finish that, and I'm going to have to finish that before doing the really fun stuff. Um, but I did finish Divinity Original Sin 2 and absolutely loved it. So I'm going to do a little bit of play of that. But there are a couple things that um, I didn't love about it or something things I want to add to my future playthrough that I'm going to go ahead and talk through too. And then one of the great advantages of playing a game that's a little bit older is it is modded to heck. <laughs> so I can experience some very well-established, very well-developed mods that can really change the experience for better or for worse. Um, so the good thing about that is it's going to make my Sunday fun day play especially interesting. The bad thing about that is that it's going to make it a very uh, non-standard experience. So I wanted to go ahead and talk through the mods I'm going to use as kind of a companion piece for that video. So right off the bat, we got bartering tweaks. Big thing here is this means that your bartering level will actually be leveled across all of your characters. So no matter which character is talking to the vendor, the highest... What is that? The highest barter and persuasion bonuses among the entire team will be applied during that barter, um, which makes sense, right? You'd have your team there. They'd all be kind of working together to kind of work on the vendor. The vendor's opinion hopefully would be influenced by the very persuasive folks in the party. So there's that. Next, uh, it's very difficult to respec early in the game. Divinity is a game that does really good character respecs throughout the game later, but you have to unlock a certain area to actually access that. So this moves this thing. So in the first area, which is one of the most challenging, you are able to get a respec early. Um, and I've wanted that especially because we're going to do some pretty major changes later that will come back to this. Next up is enemy upgrade overhaul. This is a bunch of these are ones that were just recommended in this general list, so I threw them in here. Um, this one has a randomized buff system for enemies to make the encounters more challenging with some different quirks. Uh, and then you get some randomized loot. I like that. So bonus treasure here, so why not? Uh, scale experience by player level. So I'm going to be doing some stuff that's going to make the game dramatically easier. So I wanted to go ahead and add this so it's not just a complete joke by the end of the game. Who knows if I'm actually going to play through the whole game with this, but we'll see. Be nice to throw it in there. Uh, these two are both just kind of support pieces. Leader, Library, and Animations Plus are both pieces to support the other mods. I threw them in here just in case they were helpful or required for the other mods to fully express. So better animations, more animation resources, and then just more kind of uh, textures, library stuff that, um, yeah, common functionality for other mods that should help things run a little bit more smoothly. No weapon warning. There are a lot of quirks in Divinity Original Sin 2, and one of them is that if you have your weapons drawn when you go talk to someone in a town, they will treat it as hostile. And so you actually, it's a moment where you can accidentally totally ruin a conversation or a relationship by forgetting that you've just gotten a fight and your weapons are still drawn. So I just threw that in there too. Uh, combined icon, icon aliases, I actually don't know what that means. It was just a recommended one, so I threw it in there. Summoning tweaks, I don't expect to do a ton of summons, but I like this. It's the option so you have um, a maximum number of summons of three, and then also so that those summons stay around permanently. So if I have summons, if I end up doing it in the playthrough, and I honestly don't remember using a lot of summons, but if I'm doing summons, it'll be nice to have them be a little bit more persistent. So that's a quality of life change. Next. Toggle Sprint. There are very large areas in Divinity that you spend a lot of time walking around, just like Baldur's Gate 3, but without the handy... Um, there is a waypoint system, but it's not quite as convenient as it is in Baldur's Gate 3. In many ways, Divinity is the beta test that influenced a lot of the better quality of life choices in Baldur's Gate 3. So there's an option to toggle a sprint so you can more quickly travel around maps. It's not a huge issue, but it still is nice to have that, so I threw it in there. Necrofire is a very common thing in the game, but in the base game of Divinity Original Sin 2, it is orange, just like normal fire, and you can never really tell the difference between the magical Necrofire and the base plain fire. So I really appreciate that someone was like, why aren't these a different color? Boom. Um, so there you go. I actually, looking at the mods, I figured out this one, that there's an issue where some of your returning area chests, like your storage loot chests, will sometimes disappear. Uh, which would really suck. So I had never experienced that personally, but this is in here to make that not happen, so sweet. Uh, there's a, some more character creation options, which is cool. We'll add some additional pieces. I don't know that I personally will need that, but why not? I hear it's very good. Uh, just some extra cosmetic stuff, and then also gives you some other options too. So I, I like that too, because a lot of the time the base 
character creator, you will run into characters in the game that look exactly like you. Uh, so let's fix that. This is the one I'm most excited about, Party Size Evolved. So with all of these um, heavily story-based, companion-based role-playing games, you have a party, you play through the game with those folks, and there are random encounters or things that happen because of who you have in your party, and things that don't happen if you don't have them in your party. Um, so this will let me take all of the available party members with me on the trip, and not just the usual default limited number, so I can complete the game with more characters and have more of those random encounters pop up, complete more of their story, because um, otherwise I may have to do two additional playthroughs to experience everyone's side quest. And spoilers, there is an opportunity in the story for the party members who are not with you at a specific point to all die. So you can't even bring them back out if you want to because they are dead. Whoops. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that one to have all of them available and then actually have them all participate. And I talked about using some mods that... Um, would make the game dramatically easier and having everyone in your party will give you a giant party which should make a lot of the encounters much much easier so that's why i did things like the uh, xp level up to make and the random challenger and the monsters to make things not too easy but i'm excited about that um one of the things that actually got me to this conversation is i understand there's a max party size mod for baldur's gate 3 as well and same story that one has an even more expansive group of followers. I'm very excited for my second playthrough someday <laughs> to do one with mo a mod so I can have everyone with me. So you get their random banter, you get their reactions to everything, you get all of that with them. So pumped about that. Um, yeah, so that should let me again take all of the party members. I plan on talking about this at some point, don't know when, but Pet Pal allows you to talk to animals, just like speak with animals in Baldur's Gate 3 or in Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a talent that you just have for free. It's like, you can now talk to animals. Uh, but it does take a talent slot, and those are very precious. So what this does is allows every single character in your party to be able to talk to animals. Just they can just do it, which I love. Um, it's a little bit breaking the narrative, but there are so many talking animals, it's weird to me that everyone can't talk to animals in this world. So there it is. Automatic item leveling. I really like this one. I hadn't even considered this, but your early game item, items very quickly sort of suck and you abandon them because they don't keep up with you as you level up. And this is something I've never seen in an RPG before, but this was recommended that it will actually make your gear improve as you level up, which is great. Um, in addition to just your stats, applying better stacks to it, like the bonuses and abilities on the items will actually upgrade as well. So cool. Uh, infinite spirit vision. There are a lot of moments where you actually see spirits in the world of the game, but it is a toggle and it's on a timer where if you rest, it goes away. Um, yeah, so you can just miss a ton of encounters in the game if you're not just constantly triggering your spirit vision. So this makes it infinite, so it lasts forever. Yeah, duration limit. So you cast spirit vision, it's just on. So you won't miss your ghost moments, which is particularly cool with the max party size, but also just a really important thing to be able to fully experience the game and see how many things I missed in my first playthrough. Interesting uniques, just add some more and different affixes to weapons to make them just a little bit more impactful and different, which, you know, let's try it. Uh, full loot, I hope not to use, <laughs> but it's just that if a vendor or a merchant happens to die in-game, uh, instead of them dropping just a very limited selection of their stuff, they will drop a full smorgasbord of all of the things that they would be able to sell. Um, hopefully I will not be tempted to just go on a murderous rampage through all the vendors in the game to get all their stuff, but there are moments where vendors die in-game and it's not your fault, uh, and it would be nice in that case to not miss out on the loot, so. Of course. Of course, that's my only plan with that one. Anyway, uh, excited to roll this out. Um, this is my first time heavily modding a game. Um, we'll see how this goes. I did look these up to make sure they were um, compatible with the Definitive Edition, which is the version of Divinity Original Sin 2 that I have, and that they had a decent rating so that they were relatively stable. Um, and a lot of these makers are fairly well-respected and very avid mod makers in this space. They've been doing it for a long time. So these should be very safe mods. And so I'm excited to try it out. We'll see what happens. So we'll see how the playthrough goes. Hopefully you're excited about this. If not, maybe I'm talking to myself. We'll see. But until next time, cheers.